Please, Charles. You want to take this one? What is the microphone, George? This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. George, sorry, George, I have the microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, talking about the
first office in Lebanon in 1934. Even before that, we had our products in the region, and it was through traders and importers. We cover 13 countries, the Levant, Iran, which is attached to our region, the Lower Gulf, and of course Saudi Arabia and Yemen. And the regional head office is based at DWC in Dubai, and it's an office which is separate from Nestle, UAE, and Alcoz, which looks after the Emirates, but at DWC is a regional office which covers the strategic aspect of the business in these 13 countries. It's a very diverse region, as you can see. You have everything of the extremes in the Middle East. And it's both business-wise representing many challenges, but at the same time, many opportunities. We have also to bear in mind that we operate in an environment which is highly volatile and unstable. Because we still have the deadlock between Palestine and Israel. We still have the security issue, even more specifically in Iraq and Yemen. We have the ongoing nuclear challenge in Iran. We have the political instability in Lebanon. And we have the very unfortunate situation of Syria over the past two years. It's part also of elements which are not really new in the region, because some of these issues already were already present some 10 or 20 years ago. But we still hope that all these elements, even if they are old patterns for the Middle East, will help all of us create a new Middle East. The uncertainty is the only certainty we have nowadays. And I can say that Nestle has been doing very well in that uncertain world, not only because in the Middle East we have the fastest roller coaster, which is a good analogy to the current unstable world, but also because we have had very good sustained profitable growth over the past many years. And we have achieved it by building trust. As I mentioned earlier, you need a lot of trust for people to decide every day to buy your product. And we build that trust in our product by making sure that we provide the best possible quality with our consumers, with our customers, with our people, and with our communities. We have a number of brands, some of them you may know, like Nido, Nescafe, or KitKat, and they all support our mission, which is to enhance quality of life. And each brand plays a role, being like KitKat to put a smile in your brain, or like Nido, nurturing a healthy future. If you would like to know more about Nestle, I encourage you to go on Nestle.com and uh, hopefully to get answers to some of the questions you may have about the group. Let me move to a slightly different topic, which is uh, very much a kind of great threat throughout my life and trying to illustrate the fact that it's more than just life, but it's a mission. Everyone has a unique purpose, being to change the course of history, to change the course of our future. Everyone has a purpose. A life with a cause creates a positive impact. And the question we should all ask ourselves is what impact our life will have. For me, when I was sitting like you are currently on one of the school's chairs, I was 
wondering what could be the purpose of my life. And it's not easy to figure out at a young age what the future holds for us. What I knew is that I wanted as much as possible to have a positive impact and to obey to values which I would nurture. I knew and I realized quite early that I would need more than IQ. And I know it's a bit controversial to be in a school and to say that in life there is more than just IQ. But the fact is that, as illustrated in a Canadian TV program which detract people with very high IQ, they have shown that some people with very high, even genius level of IQ, were not necessarily very successful in life. One of them was a motorcycle mechanic who used to uh, hang around with gangs despite the fact that he had a very high level of IQ. Another one had an outstanding IQ level. He was dancer in a discotheque and he was coming out and going back to jail on regular basis, living with minimum income in a very, very modest place that he shared with many others. A high IQ cannot, alone, cannot guarantee success. The, the IQ will predict a certain level or potential of intellectual power. In fact, some people say that IQ tests will only predict who will succeed in sitting for an IQ test. To be successful, to be respectful of oneself and of others, it is very important to understand that on, on top of IQ, you need EQ. Emotional intelligence, which uh, is measured through emotional emotion. Uh, sorry. Become, to become a positive member of society, you need to develop and nurture your emotional intelligence. What is emotional intelligence? It has to do with perceiving, assessing, and managing emotions. Your own emotions, but also the emotions of others how you react to somebody who is angry, and how do you react when you are angry. When you have a good level of emotional intelligence, you will recognize emotions, and this will help you to navigate with more tact and to manage relationships in a more effective way. High EQ individuals know very well that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Unlike IQ, EQ can be developed. And this is really the good news, but at the same time the challenge because you have to nurture your EQ in order to be able to get the most out of your own potential. What helped me to develop my EQ? To help me to end on which I'm still working in order to become a better dad, a better husband, and a better father. 
at the same time, a better corporate executive. And also helping me to support my children going through the stages yourself are going through. The first value or the first element has been resilience. And resilience is very much about understanding that when you have a setback, you can bounce back quickly if you work on your EQ, and you can keep going in a positive way. We all have plenty of setbacks in our life, but there is one person who framed very well the fact that it's not the number of times you fail which is important but it's how you react to what's happening to you and to the difficulties you are encountering which make the difference. And Nelson Mandela said it when he said, do not judge me by my successes. Judge me by how many times I did fell down and how many times I got back up again. I had the first taste of failure when I was 10. And in Switzerland, when you are 10, you had at that time, it has changed since, a famous exam to enter secondary school. It was one of the nightmares for all parents. And the first time I did sit for that test, I failed. And what was interesting was the fact that it helped me to focus better on my studies and to be able to go through the test and pass the exam the following year. Because failure is simply an opportunity to start again the same thing, but to do it in a more intelligent way. So don't look at failure and setbacks as a punishment. Look at them as an opportunity to rebound. Also, when I was in Sri Lanka in the 80s, I was in the middle of ethnic war. It was 97 and, uh, 87 and 88. And it took a lot of resilience for me in order to go through some difficult times, even living through, through army in post -curve. But one thing I learned is that tough times never last very long. Tough people do. The second element which uh, for me was important in developing EQ has been self-discipline. Self-discipline is all about controlling your own impulse and to consciously make the decision to say yes to healthy habits. Healthy habits are not just about eating an apple twice a day. Healthy habits, habits are doing the right things which resonates positively inside you. It goes beyond eating or smoking habits it has to do with all the positive decisions that you make every day in your life. When I went to the military service in Switzerland for 18 months, I really thought I would get one of these Swiss knives. <laughs> I was a little disappointed because, in fact, I should show you I still have the Swiss knife I got in the Swiss Army. And it's a very disappointing two blades small knife, nothing, not even red, doesn't look anything like that one. But what I got in the Swiss Army was self-discipline and leadership. Self-discipline, which is the ability to do the right thing even when no one is watching you. It means you do it because you have decided to do it because you know it's the right thing to do. Not because somebody else is asking you to do it, or not because somebody is watching you and you would be afraid to be caught doing the wrong thing. 
leadership, a true leader, and leadership itself is when your actions inspire others to dream more, to learn more, to do more, and to become more. That's what you can attempt to do when you are a leader. In fact, leadership is all about a number of elements. Being energy, being innovation, high value system, not only that you ask others to follow, but that you are the first one to obey by. Assertiveness, not aggressiveness. Positivism, always knowing that there is a light at the end of any tunnel. Boldness, because leaders have to take bold and at times tough decisions for the interest of the group. Passion. If you don't have passion, very difficult to help others feeling interested, motivated in doing things. Commitment and ownership. And you have to set the example. Openness. No fear of confrontation. Knowing that fierce conversations should always aim at improving the situation for all concerned. And it is not a fight to know who is right or who is wrong. Being proactive, not waiting for things to happen, but helping things to happen. And emotional and mental maturity. If you, as we say in Switzerland, if you behave like a kid, it will be difficult for others to consider you differently than just being a kid. And it's always impressive to see how many young students can already behave so much like adults with very matured attitude and very balanced emotional and mental uh, maturity. In fact, leadership is all about caring. You have to care for yourself, but remember that you cannot care for somebody else if you don't care for yourself. One of the major issues with criminals is that they can do what they do to others because they do not care about themselves in the first place. To hate somebody, you have to hate yourself in the first place quite deeply. It's all about sharing. You cannot leave anybody else if you don't, if you're not generous in sharing. It's not just about sharing wealth, it's about sharing time, sharing emotions, feelings, showing empathy. I will come back on this, which truly makes a difference. And it's all about daring, because if you don't dare, you will never open new paths. And on purpose, I put a snowflake in the background, because it's important to remember that leadership and leaders are like snowflakes. You don't have two identical snowflakes. And you don't have two identical leaders. Never try to become like X, Y, or Z. Do everything to become a better yourself. To, be, to try to become somebody else cannot be natural, cannot be believable, while becoming a better yourself can make a true difference on others. Another element is intuition. Intuition is really trusting in yourself, your emotions. In fact, it's listening to this little voice who tells you yes or no. It's listening to your guts, which is either very much at peace or on the opposite. Start having knots and you know that something is not necessarily right. When I was 12, I really thought that my mission was to become a doctor. 
medical doctor, in particular pediatrician, lead later on to be a pediatric surgeon. So I went to the medical school because I wanted to touch lives of people. I wanted to make a positive difference in that particular field. And I went to the medical school. But after three years, I realized that a profession is only a mean to achieve an objective. A profession cannot be an objective in itself. And you can touch people's life in many, many different ways. You can be an artist and touch people's life. You can be a musician. You can be a dancer. You can be a teacher. You can be just a colleague without necessarily having a specific title. And uh, it took me six months, six months when I really had a very tight gut. I didn't know how I would announce to my father that I wanted to quit the medical school. It took me six months of going up and down the stairs. And every time, he I mean, no, I'll speak to him tomorrow. Today, it's not really the right thing. And uh, in fact, the day I sat down and uh, told him that I wanted to leave the medical school, I realized in one second that I had wasted six months of my life. I didn't waste the three years I spent in medical school. I still cherish that time. I still had deep interest in medical topics. I wasted the six months where I didn't have enough courage to right away tell him, you know that I'm already in the process of thinking that I may not pursue this thing. Because he didn't scold me, he didn't, in fact, ask me why. The only thing he told me was, follow your heart, but take your brain with you. And I think this is another way of explaining what intuition is all about. Follow your heart, follow your guts. You don't always understand. Your brain may not always be in agreement because the brain is looking at very rational reasons why or why not. When in fact, inside you, your little voice will intuitively help you to make the right decision for you. I quit the medical school and I joined uh, HSA, which is a business school. And now I am trying to uh, liaise with people a bit more like a doctor would, especially when I do coaching or I do feedback sessions. But I do it with the mind of a businessman. The, oh, sorry. The next one is empathy. Empathy is probably the noblest value that you can think of. Because empathy is really to see with the eyes of another, is to listen with the ears of another, and is to feel with the heart of another. Empathy, I really practice it every day, every day at home with my family, guided by my wife, I'm supported by three sons, 15, 13, and 8, and it's on daily basis that I'm learning how to show more empathy. And I think it's the journey and this willingness to learn every day, to become as 
slightly better oneself, which can truly make a difference in your life compared to thinking that you are who you are and you will never change. It's also to realize that one sees clearly only with the heart anything essential being invisible to the eyes. This is truly what empathy is all about. Let me move to integrity. Integrity is very important. It's something that uh, helps you to stand for what you believe in. Because if you don't stand for clear values and clear principles, you will fall for anything coming your way. Define your values, define the rules by which you want to lead your life. It will help you to stay on a positive path. In 1983, I was in South Africa for four months uh, before even working. And what I saw at that time were signs which were very discriminatory. It was still the time of what was called apartheid. And this is something which I didn't feel comfortable with because it was not in line with my basic values in life. But at the same time, while feeling the yearning for equality, for fairness and justice, it helped me to strengthen what I wanted to do in life. And I was blessed because a few years later, in uh, <coughs> 1994, I was transferred to South Africa and I was able to lead the Black Economic Empowerment intervention that we started in Nestle South Africa. And this is something which helped me to close the loop and again to realize that what happens in your life is always for good reason. You may not understand it on the spot, but there is always a time when you will reflect back and say, now I understand why I was confronted with this or that because of what is happening today. Nelson Mandela, I had the privilege to meet him for his uh, 95th birthday. And I have to say that uh, it was quite an emotional time. He himself said, the first thing is to be honest with yourself, which is all about integrity. And if you are honest with yourself, you will always see the areas on which you can work to become a better yourself. And he said, you can never have an impact on society if you have not changed yourself first. And this is also what I've learned going through the Black Economic Environment Intervention, because I was not changing things or others until I started to change myself. And it, at that time, that I realized how diversity was important. Diversity is uh, to be curious about people. It's to be attuned to the feelings and the emotions of others. And always to be interested in what is happening rather than to be defensive against what you are faced with. In fact, it was said earlier, I joined the group Nestle in 84 as a long-term expatriate. Spent one year in the UK before being transferred to Japan at the high time of Japan in uh, 85 to 87. Before moving to Sri Lanka, to Hong Kong. Followed uh, by Vietnam. Vietnam is particularly close to my heart because it's where I met the person who very quickly became my wife and my better half. 
After that, we moved to Singapore, uh, where we had a second child. The first one was born while we were in Vietnam. Before um, moving to the Philippines briefly, to Switzerland, where I worked for the first time after 18 years in the group, first time for a Swiss to work in Switzerland. Moving to South Africa, where we had the blessing of the birth of our third son. And uh, for the past one and a half, half years, I'm based here in Dubai, overlooking that region of the Middle East with 13 countries. It's uh, all about learning from different cultures. It's not about touching others, but it's also being touched by these cultures and these people. And what I've learned through all these different postings, and in South Africa in particular, is that diversity should not be feared as being against my own views, but that differences should be celebrated as a source of enrichment and growth. The complete don't compete. And this is why I've mentioned a few times that the only person you should try to be better than is the person you were yesterday. That's the main objective, to become a better yourself. Love, the last aspect, which I think is absolutely essential, because it's through love that you, that you can aspire to become a better husband, a better father, a better colleague, and a better human being. It's also important to reflect how you behave. And every evening I do reflect on how I do behave with my family, with my colleagues, and the decisions I take every day in my function. And also to strengthen my faith and my belief in life. What we have looked at in terms of emotional quotient, emotional intelligence, was all about resilience, self-discipline, intuition, empathy, integrity, diversity, and love. And one thing which has been essential for me was to find the same values where I have been working for the past 30 years. Because in Nestle, we believe in value-based leadership. And this is all about values and passion. Because this is what helps us to take better decisions. If you, the key question is why do you need both values and passion? And it's simply because if you have passion but you have no values, you start having wrong behaviors. If you have values but you don't have passion, you have, sooner or later, a complacent organization. And it's only by having values and passion that you can work on becoming a high-performing organization. And these values and passions is also what is at the core of our mission, which I mentioned to you earlier, is about enhancing the quality of life. Now, I really think that emotional intelligence is important because it helps you to drive teamwork, it helps you to show empathy, it helps you to understand customers, which is important when you are in business like ours, to understand consumers, to understand society at large, and also to have positive resolution in handling people issues. I wish you all the best in your own life journey and hope that you will live simply, speak kindly, care deeply, and above all, love generously. Make your own weather. Remember that life is only 10% what happened to you but it's 90% how you react to what is happening to you. Thank you very much.
not sure what you were expecting, but now it will be with pleasure that I take your question. And please don't hesitate to tell me if you agree or disagree with me, or if you have other views, because it's how we can enrich each other's life. Three days 
that point would never be in an old environment. It was an environment, a way of working, I just couldn't associate myself. So try also to have some of these exposures. Don't hesitate, you know, and speak to people who are in these different functions because you can see how they think, how they act, and it can help you to better assess if it's an area of interest. Have I answered your question? You have a question somewhere here. I have absolutely no issues 
in tackling difficult situations and taking tough of all decisions. Uh, I'm somebody who tends to be, and you should ask some of my colleagues, Rainer is uh, our communication director. So you can ask him afterwards if he wants to know the thing that maybe I am not too aware about myself. But uh, I, I know that I'm demanding. I want to push people to do better. I do not compromise easily. Uh, I really want to help and support people in growing. For me, growth with individuals is the most important. It's not growing as a leader when you are at work. It's growing as an individual throughout your life. There are times I engage with some of my on topics which either are more personal or are just the concern they have in their mind because of the child, because of the situation in school, because of the parent, because it's all about life. It's all about developing yourself as an individual. Um, I really try to, as much as I can, while being demanding, and not compromising. I'm trying to help as much as possible young colleagues to focus on what they are doing today and stop always having expectations about tomorrow and after tomorrow and always being unhappy with what they have because they are system brand manager and they cannot wait to be brand manager. And when they become brand manager, they cannot wait to be senior brand manager. And at the end, they are always looking into tomorrow start getting fulfillment. If you don't get fulfillment today, you will not get fulfillment. Uh, I'm very straightforward, open, transparent. Anyone knows what I think. For the good, the bad, or the other. Sometimes people don't like what I'm saying, but I always say, if you don't want to hear what I genuinely think about Anything, just don't ask me. Because if you ask me, you will get my answer. And I'm not somebody who is trying to be fighting to be political or to think, what do you think the appropriate answer? No, I give you the answer which I deeply have inside. All the years I have tried to round a little bit my corners because I tend to be. If I would describe myself in geometry, I would say maybe more of a square than a circle. So I'm trying in smoothing the angles to become a rounder person. Because I was very, I don't want to generalize, but somehow very Swiss, very black and white, uh, very masculine in looking at the right versus the wrong. You know? Not only be happy if I was right, but making sure I would prove the other one was wrong. Which is different, very different between women. For women, it's the exchange which is important, much more than knowing who is right and wrong. For men, what is important is not only to be right, but to prove that the other is wrong. Which is the win lose. And we all know in mathematics that plus and minus means minus. So that's what I am working on. Uh, as a leader, I have no issue to acknowledge either that I made a mistake or that I'm going to change my mind because there are new facts, new information, which really, or new explanation, which make me believe that there is another decision which could be more effective. It's important to have strong convictions, but it's not very conducive to be stubborn. You know, there's a big difference. Have I somehow is there anything you want to add on that? You can ask him afterwards why do you share uh, Nescafe Gautier with you.
And then if, if, you, if you take these four elements, they are all about yourself. These are also all about yourself. And I would say they are facets of these elements. You know, it's a bit like if you, if you take self-awareness, you will open the box of self-awareness, you will have intuition in something. Uh, you will have diversity. And you will have to have diversity in how you handle it. So I think it's here I was not trying to uh, share with you any theory. It was really the purpose of giving you just some hints about who I am, the few aspects of leadership I went through along the past 30 years. But I don't think that there is any conflict between uh, what I share with you and maybe it's more a way of illustrating these four pillars of uh, The question is how do we differentiate our products versus competitors? For us, it's really first and foremost, it's all about quality. Because we know that quality is one essential element which we trust. In fact, trust in products, in people, in relationship, is all about respect, it's all about transparency, it's all about integrity and about quality. And uh, for us, quality is something we test on every product. We have specific methodology that we call 60-40. It means that we want our products to be preferred by 60% of the consumers versus competition. We have 60-40 plus, which is the second level where we want to have the nutrition foundation in our products. This is another element. Um, Third one, always transparent. Whenever we have an issue of quality, we were the first one spontaneously to mention it, to recall the products, to compensate because We don't retain it. In the same way, if consumers complain about something, we will change the product. Most of the time, the consumer complaints show that something was wrong with the product, but very often the storage was not really good. So you may have more ants into a big powder, or you may have issues of a chocolate becoming white. But it's very seldom that it's really because of the fact that it does happen. And every time we give the true answer and say, this is what we have analyzed, we have reference in our factories, we keep reference of every single batch, and we can analyze and explain the emotions. It's very important. If you try to pretend, if you hide something from your consumer, the trust will be gone. Uh, I think it's quality and trust are two very important elements. Uh, Let's go listen. Go. Yes, in the. Go on. I'm not sure where, but first one to stand and speak loud enough.
because you know this analogy I always use is that the river is a river because you have billions of drops of water. How did any river, any lake, any sea start just as one drop? If you can make a difference, if you show, in fact, it was Gandhi who said, be the change you want to see. If you behave in a way that you are constantly doing, which is a positive way based on positive values, some people around you will start being influenced. And they may take on themselves this way of being, this way of reacting, and some others will go. And after it becomes a snowball, it never think that there is nothing to do on the opposite. Um, and I think it's, it's really a question of asking yourself how much do you want to make the difference? And if you have that conviction, as the Bible has said, you will be able to move mountains. I really believe in this. The difficulty is when you start being a gang with the reference and not the right reference. Where to be admired by the other members of the gang, you have to do things which are not in line with your value. But if this happens, it's a unique opportunity for you to stand up and to say, guys, I'm sorry, I will not do this with you. And I know it's difficult. I was a teenager, I know how much it cost me at time. But one thing I can guarantee you, I'm really proud of myself. I have always try, and at times I did fail, I acknowledge it, but I always try to stand for what I do. And at times it did cost me, because I was not politically correct, because I was not, I lost friends, whatever it could be from the age in your life. But at least you know what you stand for.
So what we started was uh, what we called Healthy Kids. And we worked in Lebanon, with the American University of Lebanon, to develop the Healthy Kids product program, which is all about understanding the nutritional needs of the children and to roll out the program in class by the teachers to help students have better knowledge of nutrition, but also to take the right decisions at home in terms of intake of food and also in terms of physical exercise. And now after three years in Lebanon, we have evidence-based results which show that we are helping the children in having uh, in doubling the intake of fruits and vegetables and having much better knowledge about nutrition. We have started, we have a pilot in Dubai that we started last year, and this year we will start a pilot in Saudi Arabia. We have another program which is about WET, which is a water education program for teachers, for them to explain and help children to better understand the need and the needs on that note, so you clearly got a profile in the Eastern Hemisphere and you've worked all around for almost what, 20 years? Yes. Um, well, 30, I'm sorry. There is um, a lack of trade unions and women's rights and equal pay. Do you feel that women are equally represented in the workforce in Asia and the East? Uh, generally speaking, I would say Nestle is very much about uh, having equal treatments to have the same job to be treated uh, in a similar way. We don't have, for instance, in Dubai, we have in Techno Park a large factory where the gender uh, is not represented as well as we would like to. For the simple reason that in the UAE, not possible for women to work in shifts. So this is putting some constraints. So wherever we can, we are working on having appropriate gender balance. In the regional office, we are very much working on it, and now we have moved from 16% of managers being women to 21 last year. We are working on it. We have specific interventions on gender balance. We have changed some of the policies. We are providing opportunities to work part-time for some and times to work at home to take longer maternity leave and things like that. For us it's very important because you know our products first and foremost concern women and mothers. Our products are rarely bought by men, except if it's a gift card, you know, because it's just to have a break on the go. But when you think about breakfast cereals, you think about milk powder, even the coffee is bought most of the time by the mother in the world. So for us it's very important. We are not there, we are not yet where we would like to be, but we are progressing very well. Nescafe Arabiana, you can go and we will find the sun. And uh, it's been 
very well received, be very successful, and it's a true localization because it's unique, because it never lost in many other countries, and it's really to cater to the local needs. Is there any need to meet awareness for the demand of the consumers in the context of your culture? It needs any way to? Any way to read awareness? Raise. Yes, we do it with most products, either through uh, uh, TV advertising, more and more through digital means. We do it through sampling in store, we do it through demonstration. So, yes, we, we try to use as many routes as possible to increase the, the awareness.
definitely is an advantage versus having uh, music. Okay. Um, I still prefer you know, to have a dentist who studies uh, dentistry at the medical school rather than gynecology. You know what I mean. So, of course, it gets important. But how do you yourself choose a doctor among 10 doctors? About attitude, how they behave, how you feel about these people, the fact that they share the same values, that vibes, you know, at the same frequency. That's really, I think, what is the most important in selecting an individual. By the way, I still believe I don't know if it's because I didn't have, uh, you know, high education. I don't have an MBA. I don't have a PhD. I really strongly believe the best school is life. And uh, don't think that you learn between eight and five when you go to school. Of course you do. But you also learn outside school when you agree or disagree with your friends, when you are a member of a team, when you practice sports. That's also where you can reach yourself. So ladies first, I think not. Ah, they love it too. Okay. I was looking for the twin, but I have to say they are difficult to spot you just on my own.
here over the past few years, uh, probably two things. One definitely was a big challenge uh, when we still had the factory in Syria because every day the safety of our people was concerned. And I have to say that this was probably the time when uh, I was most uh, affected in Germany because there are things, when you can control things, it's much easier. When you cannot control them, then you can only help others to prevent issues and to react to the way or another. You feel that you can also be very weak. Okay. But, uh, this was one of the last years, one of the, of the biggest challenges.
I think uh, it's really what uh, I, I'm trying to do is uh, <clears throat> every day I reflect on how I behaved, what I was faced with, what was my reaction. It can be because I had meetings and how I handled the situation or because I had uh, a people issue or because I, I uh, interacted or, for instance, what I am going through now, tonight I will think about it. How can I be more effective next time? I will even ask some people. So, for instance, one of the first things I will do when we have finished, I will ask Isham to ask some of you to give me feedback. Was the presentation too conceptual? Was it too long? Did I reach you? Or did I miss the point? Were you interested in other aspects? Because for me, it's questions of doing things every day that you play. And that's what I'm doing as an individual. I'm doing uh, uh, this with my wife. Because at times, I'm not the best husband possible. At times, I don't show enough empathy. At times, I'm too much focused in my own world, forgetting her world. At times, I'm irritated with the children. Very often, whenever I feel I had a wrong reaction, after having reflected on it, I go back. Can be to my children, can be to my wife, can be to my colleagues in saying, you know, I really thought about it and I'm in trouble about it because I overreacted. I have no issue in apologizing because it liberates myself. And I think this is something, if you can feel it, it can help you all along your life. Nobody's perfect. Okay? It's all a question of being genuine and trying to be a better one. So reflect. Get the learning. If you have to apologize, apologize. If you did something wrong, correct it and move forward. Don't remain stuck into the past. Day. I've made many mistakes. My life, my most people, is all about good, bad, and I can it. But it's also how to research. So get the learning. Not, don't just move on or get in the past, but get out of the past. Focus on the future and see how what you have learned can help you to be even happier into the future. Life is all about being happy. It's not about having money, it's not about having possessions and so on. If you live in a billion and I'm on my own and I'm happy, what do I do with it? So I think it's a question of balance and a question of feeling good about yourself. Align in your values and your mind with your heart and with your friends. Embrace life. And whenever you are faced with difficulties, remember that any difficulty you are faced with is to give you an opportunity to learn something, to overcome something. And you will be presented again and again with the areas you have to work on in your life. And when it comes back, don't think, oh, why is this happening again? But think, ah, it's another opportunity because last time I didn't handle it very well. I have another opportunity to handle it even more intelligent, smarter way. I really wish you all the best in your life journey, not just for your time.